The, uh, I, I just uh, have a question. Do we have any idea of how big this bureaucracy would become to consult to small business? Is there a cost? Uh, do the authors of the bill have a cost estimate as to, you know, what, how big this would become? I mean, I, I find it very ironic that we're, we're, we're trying to simplify health care here and have a national health care system, and now what we're going to do is we're going to provide consultants all over America to advise small business who employ 95 percent of Americans, and the, uh, I'm glad my ranking member thinks it's an okay idea. I'm just kind of uh, uh, dumbstruck by saying, whoa, here we're creating, uh, this is going to be a very busy commissioner, uh, but I, I'd be, do we have any idea of how many people this is going to be? Well, certainly, let me first say the commissioner yeah, would not be the person who would be doing it personally. Um, no, I know so, that. He's going to establish this, but, yeah, I mean. In conjunction with the Small Business Administration, which is already in place, they already provide assistance to small businesses today. Uh, so it's not that we would be creating necessarily a whole other level because they already do it. I'm not sure that they consult. Do, you, do we know that they consult on health care going on? Well, out that's healthcare? what we're going to be asking them to do. So but, it's a but, new but role. But the system itself is in place. The vehicle, the, the Small Business Administration exists. We're not creating a whole other entity. What we're saying is that we're asking for the commissioner to consult and work with small business to determine the best way to deliver that information. And at this point in time, we have no idea what that would be or how big it would no, be. Because no, because the cut that it hasn't happened, so we don't know what the Small Business Administration and the Commissioner would agree to. No, we do we do not know at this time. Yeah, the only thing I will agree with on on this amendment is small businesses will need counseling. I'm not sure it's going to be counseling as to uh, how to uh, buy health care, but it's probably going to be counseling as to how to stay in business. But uh, well, certainly. Uh, I, I'll, I'll be opposed to the amendment. I'll yield back to my uh, my ranking member. Yeah, the um, you know I, I was listening. I'm listening to the discussion on this, and it, it says that we're going to preserve the superior benefits that the people in Hawaii are going to get. And actually, I don't think that that's what this amendment says. It says that the secretary. Let's see. Secretary of Labor determines, I'm not sure why we have the Secretary of Labor doing this rather than the Commissioner, but determines that such coverage for employees is substantially equivalent to, that's the standard, uh, to the essential benefits package, which I guess in the tiered layer of benefit packages is the lowest of the benefits package. So whereas the benefits may be significantly higher, uh, right now that if in the future, uh, that as we move into the future, Hawaii, I guess, can lower its benefits package, but as, lo as long as it is above the minimum, it continues to maintain its exemption. Is that correct? Will the gentleman yield? Yeah, I'll yield. Yeah. Yes. Okay. There's no reason. I, I don't know why we would give one state a preference uh, over the other uh, 49 states and the territories. I think that is blatantly unfair. Uh, if, if they've got such a great program, then, uh, you know, they're not going through any process here of uh, certifying their approach. Uh, I think that uh, with the problems that we've got in the states right now, I think there'd be a whole bunch of states that would love to be exempt from this law. Will the gentleman yield? Yeah, absolutely. If any other state sought and received a congressional ERISA exemption and mandated employer-covered health care, then you would fit into Hawaii's situation. But absolutely no other state fits into this situation. Hawaii led the charge, and in fact, as far as I'm concerned, what we're attempting to do with this bill is what Hawaii did 35 years ago and did not get <laughs> and was not followed by any other state. But there are two things that any other state that seeks this kind of a exemption well, has to get. A risk exemption other states, and mandated reclaiming my time. coverage. Other states uh, may have approached these things differently. This is signaling out one state uh, where I thought we were going towards national health care, where all states were going to be treated equally. All Americans were going to be treated equally. Uh, and moving into the future, Hawaii is going to be treated differently, and it can lower its standards. And as long as it doesn't fall below the minimum, it will be treated differently than all 49 other states. I just think that's uh, blatantly unfair. If, if it's such a great program, 
The bill has in place a waiver process that if anybody else wants to be exempt from the law, uh, they can apply to go through that waiver process. Uh, and I think that that's a, that is a fine system that has been set up. And uh, we ought to find out uh, how, how effective it is. And for folks on the other side to say, well, you know, that's going to be burdensome, that's going to be time consuming, that's going to be difficult, it may be disruptive. Well, hey, you wrote it. Uh, and if that's the process that it's going to be and it's going to be that hard, then maybe we ought to s change the process for getting the exemption rather than putting an exemption in for just one state. That doesn't seem very fair to me. And the, the way they get their exemption is by having a 30-minute debate here in committee. And they, they get exempted from this. Uh, uh, I just uh, I think that is, a, that, is, that is a terrible precedent. I think it is great for Hawaii. Uh, and I applaud Hawaii for, uh, for taking steps. I don't know if I would have agreed with them, but, you know, they've taken steps. They've done things that uh, they've innovative on, uh, innovated in their approach. But I don't think just because they've innovated in a certain direction that the majority now believes is the right way to solve the health care problem, that they get this special exemption built into law and that other states don't. They ought to go through the same process that everybody else needs to go through in the future, uh, which is a waiver process. They can, break, they can break through the barriers and show us how to get through the waiver process uh, if their system is so good and so effective. With that, I yield back. Seek recognition. The, um, this is going to be a disappointing day, not only because of this policy, <clears throat> but also because of the tremendous amount of authority that we are going to vest in, uh, in, an, ag in an agency outside of Congress, uh, this commissioner for determining these, these benefits. I don't think it's at all reassuring to hear the description uh, that you're giving uh, that you assume that there will be multiple plans some that will include this, others that will not. We don't know that. This commissioner is going to decide that. He could, he could put it in as a basic requirement and say that every single plan uh, that is going to be, quote, unquote, government approved has to provide uh, this basic service. Um, just as I, I, I can only imagine the uproar that would come from some folks if uh, you know, the, the service were not, uh, or this procedure was not offered, and it was said it doesn't have to be uh, a procedure. I don't think that uh, you would allow that to happen. I just think that the, the authority that we are putting into this extraordinary <clears throat> position <clears throat> to make these kinds of decisions without uh, accepting any guideline or uh, direction and just being silent uh, on this issue is not necessarily a, uh, a very positive way or a positive direction to go. I think we know um, where, where this will end up. I'll, I'll yield back. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Pennsylvania, Mr. Platts.